Now the aim of this video is to help you decide which one is for you. With that I say, welcome to another time up with me on Alec GTV. My name is Alec Godwin if you're just meeting me and today we have a comparison between the fantastic brand new Crane 3S and my long time and first ever gimbal, the Moza Air 2. All that and more coming up. Welcome back guys. If you're new to this channel, I will appreciate if you just go ahead and click the subscribe button. Um, here we do music, movies, tech reviews, and uh, short films. Everything, basically everything entertaining. If you like to watch movies or you like to make movies, this is a great channel for you to be a part of. Subscribe, click the notification button so you get notified all. That's what you want. Now, there are other great gimbals out there, but I've never had hands-on on them. So I'm making this comparison because I have had hands-on on these two gimbals. And I, I think I can tell you a little bit about both of them. I got 10 points. I had already already shot the video, but I had a bad audio on that video for some reason. I'm gonna be do I'm gonna be the talking head here, and the actual the original video is gonna be more or less uh, my bureau. Number one comparison will be the build quality. And um, though it's very close, I think this, they both did a very good job in the quality. And, and you could see them from the first side during unboxing, the, you know, the impression you get, you, 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 you can't beat that on the Crane 3S. So even though it's very close, I would like to give it to the Crane 3S. Next on the line is the battery compartment. Okay, for the Moza Air, you have to take the batteries out and, you know, put them, you know, figure out like, even though you know, it's a, you still have to take a look at the positive negative sign because sometimes you forget like how it should be. Okay, it's positive up and then on the way, the other side is uh, positive down, you know, stuff like that. But you have to look at the, uh, at the sign on the gimbal itself, which is very small. It's very tiny. You have to really strain your eyes to get a look and see, oh, what is it again? I think the green three is a little bit bigger. The sign on the directions is a little bit bigger. And then the ease for which you can put your batteries in it it's a lot better because it's it's open top like this and you put your batteries inside unlike the uh, Moza Air which is erect like this and then you stick it up and you be you know they'll be falling out you try to arrange them you know it's really not a bummer but you know if we want to say winner of course it has to be the Grand 3S okay that battery compartment I mean and the way it even shuts when you put on the battery, the, you just push the latch and it stays in place. So firm. Let's talk about battery life. Hmm. I will I will have no choice but to give it to the Moza Air 2. It lasts for 16, I think it's 16 hours. And um, the Crane 3S lasts for about 12 hours. This is understandable because they use the same batteries. But for the Moza Air, the batteries are four pieces. Four pieces of these batteries power up the Moza Air. While three pieces of the same batteries power up the um, Crane 3 years. Now, let's talk about weight capacity. How much can this gimbal or each gimbal carry? Mm. Straight up. I could just jump, say, and go to the next one. The Crane 3S wins. Um, Crane 3S can carry a payload of about 14 kg, and while the um, Moza Air 2 can take up about 9. Point something pounds, also on the screen. Now my, my number five uh, will be the general ergonomy, and I bring this up because uh, it's. The general ergonomy is what really um, 
floors the Moza Air 2. Now, even though the, Mo the Moza Air 2 can carry nine pounds, it cannot even carry all cameras that are nine pounds just due to the form factor. So uh, if the cameras don't have like an easy shape, it will not be able to take it. But the Green 3S had this latch that could extend, you know? Two things they did that was outstanding. They had a large um, base that could extend if you need, if need be. You know, if you pull it out, it will extend and you put your camera on it. And then they also have the optional extension arm, which you will uh, add to it and be able to carry most of the big cinema cameras along with their rigs and stuff like that, uh, which is like just amazing. It's, it's really amazing. So for the economy, um, of course, the Crane 3S wins again. Hmm. Hmm, this, is, this is looking one-sided, right? Keep watching. There might just be a shocker down the road. My number six will be the ease of balancing the gimbal. This is very crucial because you want to be on and off, like, let's go. On location, you want to put the camera, change mount, change lens and stuff and balance and get your stuff running in no time. The Crane 3S once again shines here because you can lock all the axes and balance your gimbal with ease. But there is a third gimbal that I'm going to talk about at this end of this video, my new gimbal. And um, I'll tell you why, why that came in. Let's talk about the menu was the ease of use of the menu systems on these gimbals. Well, I'll tell you what I've experienced. I think that the Moza Air 2 stands out here. The menu is so on point on the Moza Air 2 that everything lines up like you could just do everything you need to do on the um, unit itself. For the Korean 3S, it's just okay. It's not a problem to work with, but I think the Moza Air shines because you really can do without the app. Let's take a look at the ease of use. Ease of gimbal use, the modes, effectiveness of the modes, and uh, you know what generally you could achieve with each of them. From my experience, the Moza Air 2 wins. Go ahead and put it in the comment. Uh, I would like to know what you think too as well. If I'm going to try to help somebody to decide that comes in, you might want to factor in the price, what the price is. So effectively, uh, the Crane 3S is uh, 749 at least that's what I got it. And then the Moza Air was uh, 550 or 540 However, the Korean 3S is still the more expensive one and it's understandable why it is more expensive. So if you want to get any of them, pretty much like six to three so far with the one to go, it's almost like, oh, you know, there's no need. It's a clear winner, the Queen 3S, right? Okay. Now let's talk about the tent. And let's see how the balance could change even with one. <laughs> with, with just this one. How reliable are these gimbals? Hmm. Well, this is a hard one to say because really there are different versions on the internet. Uh, Everybody is saying differently about the current 3S, you know? There are a lot more complaints than there are positives. Well, I, I mean, I might be wrong, but Maybe they let too many units that are faulty out. I don't know what the issues are. Um, 
Some people are bringing out new videos showing how great the thing is. It is great. It has everything to be great. It has no reason not to be great. But somehow, it is not been reliable. There are a lot more people saying it's unreliable than people saying it's reliable. Now, I will give you one tip here. It's just something to help, something like a tea, little tip that I noticed from uh, Justin Phillips on his channel. He took out the extension arm and his issue stopped. Like, he could also mount the Black Magic on his, on his screen 3S without the extension and that was it. So probably, just probably, the issue might come, issues might come with the extension arm, which is, you know, kind of a bummer because it was really meant to carry um, larger um, cameras. Another argument is that it, it can carry, you just need more weight, you probably don't give it enough weight. I bought the Crane 3 years strictly for the Sony FS5 Mark II because the, the Moza Air could not, due to the form factor I talked about, could not uh, take it, sit it on it, could not handle it, could not uh, balance it, all right? So, but at the back of my mind, I was hoping that if the current 3 years can carry smaller cameras, in fact, I just assumed that if, I, if, if all goes well, I will sell the Moza Air 2 and just have the current 3 years for both the Blackmagic and the Sony FS5 Mark II. Reliability, you know, I don't need to go through all that again. Go check the video before you get to jump to buy. So, how about the Moza Air 2? It's been reliable. I never had a problem with it from day one. I never had to, um, for a new, for a first timer to gimbals, it was a very comfortable work on comfortable experience. I, I only just watched some tutorials and I was good to go. I hope I have not been blabbing too much. I hope that makes sense. So for reliability, in conclusion, uh, I give it to the Moza Air. So in effect, it will be like a six to four, um, with the Crane 3 as the winner in terms of the categories that we have specified. Before we go, I want to tell you that I did return my Crane 3S and I replaced it with another gimbal that I'm going to show you, show you right now. And it will shock you. I'm not going to spend more time and explain here, but I'm making a video which I want you to watch out for and I'll tell you why I dished the Crane 3 years for the Crane M2. <laughs> it's a long story, but you you will agree with me. At least most of you will understand with me what I have. I have a game plan and I'll explain in the next video um, why I ditched the Crane 3 years for the Crane. M2. It's crazy, but you gotta see the video. Thank you guys for watching. Um, subscribe if you're new to this channel, if you're not already. Like if you did like, learn something. See you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.